Hey everybody, what is going on? I hope you are having a wunderwald, Freddy. Freelandy. And I hope that it's not super windy where you're at, because where I'm at, the winds are howling, it's a blowing. You've got a gale upon us. Um, let me get this up so I can see what you beautiful, beautiful people are doing. Um, I've got rhythm, I've got music, I've got a fish room, who could ask for anything more? Why can't I find the stream that's going? Oh, wow. oh we got, we got electoral crap ads, I'm so sick of these. Go away. I don't like any of you politicians. If you get to political power, you're a jerk face. All right. Get out of here. Why is there two ads on this? It's supposed to be set to one skippable ad. Okay, there we go. All right, guys. What is going on? Now I see your comments. Now I see your beautiful faces. Well, your your avatars. I mean, close close enough. Probably better than some people's beautiful faces. Um, what is going down, Rob? Uh, <laughs> you, your girlfriend wants you to watch Fight Club again. Um, well, it's a good movie. Uh, it cracks me up that Fight Club was. Like, a lot of guys saw it, and they were like, oh, it's totally about beating people up and, like, rah, rah. And, like, they totally missed the point that the author's, like, very flaming, flamboyant gay guy, and that it's all about, like, toxic masculinity and what that does to a man in society. Um, and everyone, like, takes it for the surface, like, reactionary uh, part of it, and they, they don't get that, like, all those characters, including the woman's in his head. Anyways, um, good movie, though. A better book. I went and I saw Chuck Palahniuk, the author of Fight Club, um, and, well, and like Haunted and a whole whole bunch of other books too. But uh, I went and saw him in, uh, when, when Fight Club came out, like whenever that was, like 2000 or 99. And I was underage and we went to go see him speak at a uh, festival like a music festival he was like one of the side stages was he was going to talk which was kind of an unusual thing and when he got there um no you know what it must have been just after 9 11. yes it was it was in the year 2002. so i am off it's right after it came it was after it came out he must have been working on his next book um but he had been detained and I believe arrested for he basically chopped up pig parts and mannequin parts and put them in his carry on and in his his check bags uh, on a plane to protest all the uh, TSA security that he thought was an invasion of, uh, of civil liberties. Um, which I don't think that went very well for him. I think he got detained for a while, but the, 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 the moral of the story or the, the heart of the story is we were there in the audience and he was like, you know, people want, people want to, uh, see a reaction. You know, I hear people are starting actual fight clubs, like kids are starting fight clubs and they're missing the point. And he's like, but sometimes it is fun to like unravel the threads of society uh, with a thought. And so he said with a thought and then he stopped and he got, went down to his bag and he had a, um, like a gym bag type thing filled with, uh, mini bottles of 151 alcohol, 151 proof rum. And he said, this is an all ages audience, correct? And everyone, yeah. uh, kind of cheers. And he goes, all right, well, let's unravel this. And he just throws handful by handful by handful of mini bottles out into the audience. And yes, we did get a couple. Um, and as dumb as we were, as young as we were, we drank them rather than saving them. They're probably like collector items now if you didn't drink it. Uh, anyways, that's my little fight club Chuck Palahniuk story. Uh, fish, what's going on with fish today, right? Am I right? <laughs> How about them fish? 
Uh, Curran Julian works. What's up, Sky Dancer? What is going on? Um, and I believe Fight Club is on Netflix right now. Uh, by the way, uh, Rob's Fish, uh, Lane, Laney Bennett. What's up? Welcome. Make a change. I can catch a live stream right on. Uh, or I made a change so you can. Uh, let's see here. Who else is lurking in here? We got Asia Llewellyn. What's up? Um, Skeddy Nona. What's up? How are you doing? Uh, Bud Aquatics, Cara C, uh, Jeannie B. Whoa, my chat just jumped very severely. That was odd. Um, who else do I see hiding in here? Hello from Maine. All right. Uh, Maine, all on the other side of things. Uh, Cody's Variety Shop. What's up, friendly fellow fish keepers? That's the, that's the attitude I love. Um, let's see here. Uh, Linda, what's up? Chris, the Mad Aquarius Biggs. What's up? We got we got a cichlid expert in here today, guys. So uh, you guys, someone call me on my BS, all right? Uh, amateur Aquatic Addiction, what is up? Um, who else is in here? Jay's Aquatics. What's up? Um, so Eric Wyrock, Josh Hayden, Stephen P. Two thousand two. What is up? Uh, so we got we got three people now that were at uh Fish Fest, Fishtoberfest. I think Fish Fest is just a better name um fish fest with us uh and uh we got the rapper Stephen p uh we've got and we've also got uh chris biggs the mad fish keeper mad aquarius who's really just a very educated and very tattooed man from canada that knows a lot about his cichlids in fact i actually during my my live presentation I had pulled pictures of uh, uh, Egyptian live or Egyptian mouth brooders, Nile, Victorian live bear. They have they've had a lot of names throughout history, but the Egyptian mouth brooder, I think, is what we're calling them now. And uh, yeah, hey, Mock, what's going on? Nano Aquarium guy, what's going on? So yeah, we uh, and Jeff Kane, what's up? Uh, so yeah, we got those. Uh, I, we got those pictures up on the screen and I'm going through these old fish that are in the hobby and no, um, no, I, I, I had a picture of some random fish that was just not uh, an Egyptian live or a mouth brooder. And I felt like such a dummy, but Chris told me, which was nice of him. Not like during, he wasn't like, Hey, idiot. Uh, he's got, he's got a big manly voice like that. Um, Big John, what's up? Welcome. Tampa Tom, what's up? Welcome. Uh, so I forgot to uh, forgot to tell you guys uh, my for sure plan, I guess. So what happened last night was I couldn't decide between Miami and Tampa. And the thing is, I don't know anyone in Miami, really. I mean, I know a couple of y'all, and I'd love to see you and meet you. But, I mean, I don't have, like, long-term friends, and no one's coming on coming, <laughs> coming on to me. No one's uh, coming on this trip with me. And I'm trying to do it on the very cheap um, because I'm not going down to speak, and I'm not going down. Like, I'm not getting paid, or this trip's not getting paid for. I'm basically trying to do it as a tax write-off. And, uh, so that's why I want to make sure like every day I'm going out, I'm collecting, I'm filming, I'm doing something, but I did get the clear, um, from a couple places, uh, the aquaculture research lab said that I could come tour again. So I did that five years ago. It'll be fun to do a follow-up, um, see what they're up to down in Dest uh, Dustin, uh, Florida, like kind of down by what? Brandon and uh, not quite to Sarasota, but across the bridge from uh, uh, from uh, St. Pete's. And uh, the the I think the game plan is going to be fly in to Tampa. 
I, I'm going for 10 days in December. And I know that it can be iffy. Like the weather could be 50 degrees if it wanted to get real angry. Now, usually it's not. Usually it's like 75 and pleasant. But it could be. Um, so if that happens, then I probably will drive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a rental car and drive down to um, like more Miami area. But um, I think... I think that I'm going to start down in like Sarasota maybe um, or Venice area. I want to go tour and I've gotten the invitation. Um, Andres from uh, Bio Aquatics uh, Farms, which I'm really excited about. Uh, he's bred a lot of fish that I can't breed <laughs> like panda loaches and bleeding heart tetras and stuff, stuff that very few people can breed he's gotten to breed. And so I'm really curious to see his setup and, and I would love to share it with you guys and film it, film things to bring back with you guys. Also, there's a couple old time fish keepers that I want to meet and speak with and uh, take notes for my, my, uh, dare I say it book, my, my theoretical book that I have been accumulating, uh, info and details for, you know what? I just realized I have yes I do I've actually got another diffuser I thought this was empty for some dumb reason uh, but yeah so I think I'll probably start down there then I'll head north and I'll probably go back to Spring Hill area where Grant and Shelby are and then I'm probably gonna make it all the way up hopefully to Lucas Brett stay with him for a couple days or in that area go if it's if the weather's not freezing cold you know if it's not under if it's not just pouring rain in 50 or something like that or whatever um which would be kind of unusual but not unheard of um up on that kind of florida georgia line area um if 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 that's not if, if it's not bad up there um then i'll i'll come like all through that nature coast area as they call it. And I'll try to go to a lot of those crystal blue springs and stuff. So that's the game plan. Um, and uh, Tampa Tom, you might have a vehicle I could use. Well, um, let's chat. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm basically just doing this because you guys have seemed to really like the content that I've created, or at least somebody has. Uh, and I have a blast doing it, not to mention I want to ship up more fish. So I want to, I'm going to get the license and everything, and then that will allow me to catch five non-competitive um, non or game fish um, a day that are like small and not protected or whatever. So that's like killifish and stuff, I guess. Um, and you're not supposed to sell them or anything, but I will be able to then breed them in Washington and then uh, from there sell their babies. So with some of those fish, like least killies, those things breed like insane. Like I have some here right now and uh, they have babies like wild if you give them a big old tank. Uh, Cody's Variety Shop, what's up? Do some wild cichlid fishing if you get the chance. South Florida is littered with them and it's fun. Yeah, no, I want to go to, um, I mean, that's why I would want to go to Miami in the first place. Like if the weather is looking like it's going to be bad, then I'll just head down to Alligator Alley, cut across over to Dade, and then, uh, yeah, go that way. Um but yeah, I mean, I don't really have anybody that I'm set to meet. Um, thanks, Tom. Uh, I don't have anybody that I'm set to meet necessarily uh, or do anything. My lawyer, <laughs> my best friend, who is uh, who married my wife and I, he's down there. Um, and I guess the days I'm traveling are probably going to be like the th the uh, 4th through the 13th. Lights are flickering. Not a good sign uh the 4th through the 13th of december so lucky 13th of december uh ritesh what's up um <laughs> uh andreas ryan is an absolute legend he's a 
he's a dispo di disposed Canadian. Yes. Um, Jay Oliver, what's up? Uh, yeah, if there's anybody else or anything else you guys think I should check out in the Tampa area slash west coast of Florida, maybe Sarasota. I probably won't get down to Fort Myers realistically, but like maybe, maybe I'll get down to the Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, cut across, go all over. Who knows? Um, yeah, there are flood warnings in my area right now for Seattle. Um, and it's supposed to snow and like be crazy up here, like any day now, like I think Friday it's or not Friday. Today is Friday. Um, I think Sunday and Monday there, there was a threat of snow in the lowlands here after we had an 82 degree day on the 18th of October or whatever. Yeah, winter's coming in quick here in Seattle, that's for sure. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. Um, you can you can uh, email me, Alexander J. Williamson at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to email me, yeah, don't don't leave anything too personal out there unless you want everyone to know about it. Um, yeah, I hope that's yeah, very nice of you, Jay Oliver. I hope everybody's doing well with their families and all that too. Um, you like the fish store videos, MX Rider? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm hoping I can get a hold of some more uh, more fish stores. I've been to a few in Tampa. Honestly, there was nothing that impressed me five years ago, like nothing that I was like blown away by. But um, I'm hoping to get a hold of the guys at Imperial and and also a few more farms. And the research lab is really cool down there in Ruskin. Um, so, you know, if I can meet with anybody at the universities uh, in, in Florida, too, um, anybody that i'm semi near i'm i'm game to go meet like if i can find somebody who wrote some of the papers that i've covered on fishery on the channel that would be so cool um i know there's a few professors down there a lot of them do pretty heavy duty saltwater and aquaculture um uh, but there are people uh working on other things also um yeah and ryan at wild fish tanks i've already talked to ryan um and he said he's game quote unquote uh to go collecting so hopefully i will be meeting up with ryan and we'll be going collecting and my guess would be that's up more towards our orlando um but yeah so definitely i'll need a car for this trip unlike last time where i was kind of not stranded but i mean i was i was limited in the area i was in um yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Fort Myers is still rebuilding from the hurricane in, on, on a lot of areas down there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, if it also the other thing is like I didn't have time with talks and things that I was doing to actually like hang out with y'all down there. So it's also a chance to go back down. And if folks are around and it works out and I'm in the area, like we can meet up and grab some food or, or you know, maybe a couple of us can meet up uh, and go collecting or whatever it may be. Um, so I, I'm pretty excited about that too. Um, collecting is really what I love down there. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get a lot of it done and to keep things alive um, and do most of the collecting that I, that I'm going to keep, I guess, um, will, will be up by, um, north of Tampa, but I did find some pretty crazy spots in Tampa that you guys haven't seen footage from yet where I'm at a CVS, like, uh, or maybe it was Walgreens, one, one of the other, it's like one of the big chain drug stores. And there's this Creek with like tires and like. I, you know, car parts and just crap in it. And in that, in that stream that's running literally right next to the CVS, it goes under a culvert and then under the road or whatever, there are Nile blue tilapia that are like huge. And then there's a uh, tarpon and like some native stuff and some, and it's all like brackish to saltwater fish, but there's these big, big uh, cichlids in there. And it just, it's like just surreal to like look down and see like, you know, 
two foot long fish doing their thing. And then you look up and there's the CVS and the dude asking for change on the corner or whatever. Like it just does not compute. feels like you're in an Amazon or something. Um, does Ryan know Chuck Davis? I don't know. Uh, that's a name I should remember though. Um, uh, one of your Seattle videos is like that too. There's a bunch of trash and some people on bikes roll up uh, and you're telling them all about fish in the ditch. Oh, that was in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. That was Chicago. And the kids came by and they're like, there's no fish in here. What? They were like blown away by the cool um, fish, which so was I. <laughs> That's why I was there. Uh, Aquaballs. George says, Alex, can pee puffer, can pee puff, wait. Alex, can pea puffers mess with guppies in a 30-gallon? Uh, four puffers and five guppies with hornwort. I mean, I've never seen more than a, a slight tail nip, and it's usually like a false charge, you know, where they kind of they kind of go, Arr! and then like stop. But I suppose they could. Uh, Delilah's Critters, welcome. Um, Josh, welcome. Your average fish keeper, welcome. Uh, do I still have half beaks? Uh, no, I don't. You know, um, the half beaks, they, you know, I've never had half beaks that are super robust and healthy for me. Um, out of all the golden half beaks I've kept, they're, they're always like good for six months to a year. And that's about it. Um, a lot of them that I've had, the females, you can see they die when they're giving birth, which I don't know, like if I'm supposed to help them somehow. Um, but I need to like up my game or maybe devote a tank just to them. Cause I really do love half beaks. They're so beautiful. And there's a bunch of kinds now, but, um, the half beaks. Yeah. Um, I've tried keeping them in high flow, medium to low flow. Um, yeah, it, the, I don't know what it is about them. Uh, I've had a lot that, even in a 40 gallon breeder, those little fish ram and they'll smash their nose on the end of the glass. And then they seem to go downhill from there. Moose. Hello. Um, but, um, ever kept CPDs with them? Actually I have, and that was fine. That was totally fine. Coolies, CPDs, they're going to mind their own business. No problem. Yep. Sarah Woodring, what's up? Alex, need to get you down here to Florida to go ditch fishing with us. Where are you at in Florida? That's what I was talking about. That's what we are talking about right now is ditch fishing. That is what I'm about. And no, I don't mind if we pull some snakes and gators and frogs and stuff. Uh, when I was about 21, my cousins down in Florida, well, I have cousins a lot of places, uh, but I have some uh, cousins in uh, Lumberton, uh, Texas that are like distant cousins. I, one of those like, I don't know, dad says we're related somehow. Uh, and they uh, took me out to an alligator park, like a like a side of the road, like pet the gators, get your picture taken, five bucks, that kind of thing. And uh, they have a big old one called Big Al down there in Texas. I think it's like 16 and a half or 17 and a half feet. He's pretty big. Uh, but my buddies are friends with the owner or know him some, or my, the, my buddies down there, my cousins, whatever they are. Uh, we went and we went into the place. And uh, instead of paying, of course, they all just like do their little like hands on the fence, hop over it, like, you know, oh, it's cool. We know Jasper who runs, the, you know, whatever. So we're all hopping over it. And this is like, I don't know, 15 years ago now. But Big Al was sleeping at the bottom of his deep, deep uh, mud hole that he lives in. And there's like a fenced and like there's like a chain link fence and barbed wire leaning over. And one of the the younger brother of the two cousins literally hops the fence, gets into the enclosure and grabs a rake and starts smacking the top of the water with the back of the rake and saying, Big Al, wake your ass up. And we're just like, oh, don't get killed. Don't, oh my gosh. And like, 
then uh, we can see someone coming down the path with the little golf cart, like one of the people who runs the place. And it becomes clear that they don't know the people or, or if they do, they don't know them well. So they have the, uh, the, the golf cart coming down the, it's like, it's like the Austin Powers high speed chase. That's not high speed at all with the guy in the steamroller is like, stop. And he's like, no. Um, but yeah, so he actually though, smacks the water with this rake and big Al comes out of nowhere and snaps at the rake. And he must've just hit it funny because the rake shot back up into his hand and it looked like he the alligator threw it somehow like a javelin with his mouth because this guy jake uh is is going like this with the rake and all of a sudden the rake he goes like this into the water and it just launches like 15 feet into the air and behind him and he falls backwards and he's like trying to pull his pants up and like he's scuttering back on the grass and uh, big Al has woken up and is at the surface now. And uh, he's just like run. And so we're all running, man, that was a chaotic day, but there's pictures on my Facebook. If you look far enough back in my Texas road trip pictures, there's literal pictures of the moment he did that. Um, all right, let's see here. Side, side trail. Um, Alex, whoa, whoa, who's gotten Kalise to spawn? Yes, I have gotten Kalise to spawn. The interesting thing was I never saw the eggs or anything, and the, the babies just appeared as, like, little teeny babies. Um, so I don't know what I did. I mean, other than I put a lot of duff down, like, leaves and stuff. I have a video on it, and I basically just took these, like, super pregnant-looking females where you could see – how full their belly was with a light. You could actually see like egg mass in there or whatever. And um, yeah, I moved those into a black water-ish kind of hill, like hill stream black water, high flow black water tank that I had set up. And uh, they just appeared like a couple weeks later. Um, now there was a lot of infusoria in that tank and like green water was added every now and then. Um, but I think the babies were born a little bigger than green water size, but yeah, um, it's doable. Um, uh, he will keep me safe. Uh, Sarah says, uh, Ryan will keep me safe from alligators. Well, that's 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 good i mean that's a plus when someone takes you out if they can keep you safe from gators you know i'm more afraid of wild boars in the south than anything else uh those things not the little javelinas but the like pigs with tusks um let's see here robs all my tanks uh have been 20 long or less so i'm excited to make that jump you get a bigger tank nice nice Wank master for supreme forever what is going on hope your day is going well i recently purchased uh purple fringed rikia huh but have not placed it in the tank yet i don't have any experience with that kind of rikia although if it's a rikia fluitans of some sort like some bright variety that is out there that i just don't happen to know which doesn't surprise me um my advice would be get a lot of immersed stuff. So have sticks, rocks, whatever it is coming up out of the water at the water line, maybe even like some floating plants or something that it can kind of collect to and stick to, um, to give it a good start. Cause it will, a lot of times you'll see it form like a halo around like a stick, uh, that's sticking up out of your tank. So, yeah. Um, Moose says, I have them breeding in a 33 long with density planted tank with wisteria carpeting the back, mid ground, crypts up front, penny wart across the top. They just appear. I have no idea. Are you talking about the Kalu loaches also? Every loach I've ever spawned, I swear, I never see the eggs or the mating. Well, actually, that's not true. Rosy loaches and the red tail loaches that are from Lake Inlay, I see them doing their mating dance all the time. But I never, ever see them doing 
you know, I never see eggs or burying or guarding or any of that. I just see babies appearing that look bigger. Like they've been around for like a month by the time I see them. Um, Cody says, uh, Alex, I hand make fish lures on my ranch in Florida for bass, panfish, etc. I'd like to send you some. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm down for that. I, I fish for sunfish up here. We don't have nearly as many, um, but we have a lot of bass, a lot of salmon, uh, we, we I have a, do have a lot of uh, pumpkin seeds, bluegills, crappie, black, white, and uh, also big mouth bass, large mouth bass. Um, and, uh, you know, out in the sound, we've got striped bass and sea bass, too. Man, something about this Dr. Pepper is just not hitting the spot today, dare I say. It tastes like soapy or something. I don't know something's up with it it's like super fizzy and just not flavorful i don't know maybe I'm, I'm losing my touch i'm losing my touch oh my gosh peplin creek aquatics is going to become a member guys it's the first that's the first uh bribe of the day uh money my way on on here i appreciate that greatly but uh as a member for a buck 99 you get access to all the behind the scenes stuff that i post which is on the community tab you guys get fish tree earlier than most of the folks um which is four extra episodes a month and uh you know basically anything else that i just feel like sharing like uh, i shared a recent article about extreme uh extremophile cichlids that i got on like an unlocked copy of um so yeah um Anything that I can share, but I might get in trouble if I share it, like, too publicly. Um, yeah, I try to do that with members. And it means so much to me. Oh, we got another member. Oh, we got a chain reaction going on here. Members. I swear, when someone super chats or members, it's like, here we go. And I know everybody's feeling the pinch right now economically. So it really, really does mean a lot to me you guys thank you so much it really does help the the camel it helps the camel keep growing it helps the channel keep going and uh you know my fish room stable and like i want to do more things like travel i mean oh who doesn't right oh alex you you uh you tease um but yeah, no, I want to travel for the channel. I want to meet more interesting people and interview cool people and go to her, you know, aquariums. I want to bring you guys better stuff. Also, I want to get a nice camera from Canon. I want to get the new, um, um, oh yeah, well, it's one of the delicate ones that you have, huh? The Rikias. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of them are really pretty delicate hey zen what's up you show up and you just start sharing links what a pal um rocky and miles what's up welcome very adorable doggies um oh yeah we forgot sometimes if you're enjoying alex please uh please show the love and hit that like button. Yeah, just X out of chat if you're on mobile because they designed them poorly. And then hit the little thumbs up and it will attract more people to my vinegar. I mean, sugar. Whatever I'm attracting people with today. Uh, like flies. Um, Alex, I'd like to see uh, some traveling live streams too. Yes. that. So that's part of what I want to go down in Florida and do this round too. So I'll be, uh, I'll probably be live streaming from Columbus, Ohio in mid November in about two weeks here. Um, and I'm going to bring my collection gear that fits in my bag. Um, I've got a foldable net that kind of sucks, honestly. I think on, the, the better way to do it is just to go to Dick's Sporting Goods and get a butterfly net. When you show up to anywhere east of the Mississippi, they pretty much have a Dick's Sporting Goods, any big metro area. And just you get a butterfly net and then you go. But there's some good nets that I'm going to hopefully bring to Florida that are like, you know, on long poles and uh, also might bring like a little weir type trap for some of the culverts and stuff. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, um, Michael Morgan, um, you said you uh, you thought you read about an invite uh, to Michigan. I would love to come to Michigan. So this goes out out for anybody anywhere in the world. No, no joke. Uh, if you uh, if you'd like to have me come talk to your club, I've got a number of talks that I've given already to other groups and seem to be semi well received. <laughs> Nobody's been like, oh, awful. Um, uh, I would hope that my friends would tell me like, you know, this needs some work, buddy, if, if that were the case. But by virtue of I, the fact that I believe in sharing talks and education, I promise that if I come to your town, I will be doing research for the weeks ahead of time about your town, your city, your region. And if there's something that fits in well about the history of fish keeping that I can uncover, that will be what the talk has heavily peppered throughout it. Like for instance, in Portland, we talked about the uh, fish keepers of San Francisco and the West Coast and how they early, very early on, this eccentric rich guy named Frank Locke brought in a bunch of fish. Well, we talk about the the fish farms and uh, you know Columbus and the um, the shipping container. Uh, they're called German cans, uh, created by uh, a Mr. Mullerette. And uh, so, yeah, there's there's a bunch of cool history from all over the country, all over the world. Um, and it never occurred to me until I just said that sentence when I was like, yeah, if, if there's somewhere in the country where you want to have me come, I would absolutely love to. Um, I would just uh, need a ticket there. Uh, I mean, obviously, I appreciate making some money. Uh, making a couple bucks because it, you know, costs money to travel and spend the night somewhere and you get food or whatever you have to do while you're out of town. But honestly, if I'm just being frank with y'all being real on the channel right now, if I can break even and not lose money, I'll come because I just enjoy it. I can probably make some content on the trip realistically, probably going to meet some of the fish club folks in your area that are, you know, very experienced that I'm definitely going to learn things from or have a good time with. And, uh, yeah. So I just think that it would be really fun. Uh, Ken's 3d aquatic says, yes, Alex come to Waterford, Michigan, and you can come talk to me and hang out with my 17 tanks right on. All right. Well, like I said, if any of the local clubs want to invite me, I'm there. Just let me know. So that's what I've been trying to spread around. It's a little hard to like break into that speaking field because it's kind of a um, not exclusively by any means, but it, it, historically it's been a little bit of an old gray hair guy with your slide projector collection of, and this is 1968 when we went to Tanganyika, and here is the variety on uh, beach one, and I'll get this damn thing to work reach to uh no so there is kind of like this stereotype of like the fish club circuit and doing the same talk every time my goal is to literally even if you guys hear the talk for instance 10 things that revolutionized the aquarium hobby and created our modern day uh aquarium trade that talk i go through the entire history in of fish keeping basically um all the way back to prehistory and if uh, for instance the slides are talking about paleolithic era and like stonehenge era fish keeping then i'm going to be showing um like for instance when i was in florida i brought a slideshow where i had looked up all the arrowheads um from titusville over by uh, jacksonville florida just south of there uh and some of the local tribes of um of the area just north of tampa if i were to go talk in tampa proper there's a whole different set of tribes that we have archaeological evidence of in tampa bay and so like i would tailor that talk to them and i would have slides on the screen of what their fishing implements look like if they have any um fish that they would keep in big ponds that there's archaeological archaeological records of i would note that um so yeah um but it I try to tailor it to to the region I'm going to. You know, the Midwest, you could definitely do a lot about goldfish. You could do a lot about early 
um, fish keeping in, in like St. Louis, Chicago. I mean, they all have rich histories of fish keeping, rich histories for American time spans, right? Um, and then if nothing else, just uh, I will, I'm happy to change the talk. So I've, I've got everything from uh, the first angelfish to be shipped across the continental United States, which meant that they each ended up costing more than a, a Model T at the time. Uh, they had to go by railroad. And then I also have talking about how the first ones were bred, both in San Francisco, New York, Philadelphia, all within three years of each other. Um, I mean, how uh, how Darwin discovered the Corydora pilatus. Um, pretty interesting stuff. Um, Sarah says, dude, I live in Titusville. Um, did you, oh, did you, what just happened? Uh, did you visit the Seminole rest? Uh, they have incredible artifacts. Uh, you know, I didn't this time, uh, I did about 15 years ago, 12, no, 13 years ago when I was finishing up my archeology span degree. Um, I, I did go through Titusville and I saw the, the, uh, also like saw like the mound people, the Cahokia mound people. I mean, all through that deep Mississippian mound culture. Um, and then I've worked with coast Salish and West coast natives for, I worked with them for three or four years of college um very closely seminole tribe is very interesting and the seminoles aren't the ones at titusville which is pretty interesting to me you know seminoles are basically a made-up tribe that came down because of pressure from from uh, being hunted as you know trophies essentially by the government being forced off the land in georgia and uh in alabama and north florida and then uh that's a, it's a conglomeration of of tribes that form just south of yep Kurundulian says Okie Finoki swamp but that Titusville site those are 8000 year old bodies uh that, that uh were actually buried very interesting and they, their diet they think was about 70% fish uh those people there and so i'm sure they knew very well how to fish catch fish make fish traps weirs dams all sorts of things uh and you know they would bury their people in these teepees without anything around it but they they would put these um spikes in the in the peat moss and they would sink people in the peat moss and they put them either in the fetal position or another like crouch position and they would mummify them underneath the bog uh and they put these stakes through at angles so that they're not going through the person but so that the person was pinned down if you can imagine a bunch of different angles kind of stopped so you wouldn't float up if it floods in the wet season um and i think there's 128 bodies out there now and uh uh <clears throat> yeah half of you still haven't hit the like button do that says zen ginger or she's gonna come break kneecaps uh, yeah, land destruction, development, cattle ranching. Yeah, a lot of that stuff caused a lot of it. But in any case, my, the moral of the story is, I, I could rattle on about that forever, is that, um, yeah, I would love to come and talk and try to make it relevant to whoever I come and uh, hang out with, whoever whoever invites me. And I will show up anywhere. You you end up uh, pitching me to come to New Zealand. I'm there. If you can fly me there, if you guys pay for it, I'm there. <coughs> I'll even do a couple talks. All right, let's let's get the the mobile cam here for the last part of the stream. I've got some eggs I want to show you guys. I've got a new fishy, and I, you know what? Actually, I'm going to tell it to you. <clears throat> tell it to you straight. I'm not going to give you the, the, the squiggly wiggly talk. So by um, over, uh, man, I'm going to butcher this now, but I, I believe it was Skipper and Ed and uh, man, I don't know who all is involved. Honestly, I'm a terrible person. Rico. Um, anyways, 
Fish Fam auction, um, Liquid Zoo, I think, is involved into some capacity. But basically, the important part of the story is that that Roxanne is here, Foxy's Fishes is here, and Peplin Creek is here. So they so kindly uh, put fish up into an auction for the Fish Fam. And I really wanted these humpback lamias, these Haitian um, kind of unusual, cute little live bearing fish they're, they're like distant relatives of least killifish which aren't a killifish that are in florida and they they even have kind of the same fin markings and and some of the like tiger teddy or um, tiger lamia striping kind of cute stripes i've also got some jamaican lamias that i don't know nobody seems to know what exactly they are they're like the metallic live bearers relative of some sort but um, any case, so I really wanted to get these ones because they they seem to be like a clean line um, that she knows, you know, what they were, where they're from. Unlike the, the the scores I usually get at like fish club meetings that are like, there's some sort of live bear. And I think maybe a goody ad might be in there for, and then maybe some guppies. And it's like, well, one of those doesn't matter at all. The other one could have completely hybridized your entire strain you know <laughs> or whatever so i i got these i ordered eight of them uh and bid on them and won yes and uh they promptly sent them out to me which was great and they sent them uh usps ground and and you know they they did the quick like um the quick way like not super slow way or anything but they i shouldn't ruin the story but I get a text from Roxy saying, hey, did you get your uh, fish? Uh, it says they were delivered yesterday. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. No, let me see. And the tracking on the packaging says 11.57 p.m. Uh, and I'm like, hmm, that's a little late for U.S. mail. That's odd. So I call the mail place, uh, our, our dispatch uh, office, which doesn't have a publicly listed number. I just happen to know about the number because every time I've sent something, not every time, uh, uh, every time I send out a batch of like 12 orders, one just magically disappears into the ether. And it's why I don't ship live fish through the post office here. Now, other people seem to have really good luck with the U.S. Post Office. So I think it really de just depends on where you're at and the route it's taking and the time of year and all that stuff. But, yeah, I have bad luck with USPS here. They're slackers here. Uh, or maybe like 90% are hard workers and just 10% are sabotaging it. Whatever's the case. So it's they see the timestamp and they're like, oh, well, it must be in the back. So they go dig around in the back room looking for this package while I'm up at the substation delivery place where trucks are coming and going and picking up more packages. Um, and there is like a, a, a P.O. box area there that I also use. So um, in theory, if I need to get something from someone I don't trust, uh, I'll send it. I'll tell you guys to send it there. Uh, but. I'm there and I'm waiting 20 minutes or so. And they're like, hey, guess what? We found it. It's uh, it's actually down in Ballard. And that that's the part of town that I used to live in like a year and a half ago. And that's towards downtown Seattle. And that is a bit of a trip. Uh, with traffic, it took me about 40 minutes to get there. It's only like six miles, but it's just a hellish traffic uh, situation lately. So I get there and I'm like, all right, I heard my fish are here. Where are they? And they actually like are talking to me and they're like, here, come on, kid. Uh, and just have me come into the back of the warehouse. And so we're just looking for a box that says live fish, maybe, or, you know, a used seagrass box or not knowing what it's going to look like exactly. So I'm looking around and they're on the computer and then they look and they're like, man, there's nothing here. I don't know what's going on. And then they, they are on the computer again and they're like, well, go out front. We'll see if we can figure this out. We'll come get you in a little bit. And so now I've been down there an hour and they, they are like, Hey, guess what? Great news. We found that it's on a truck out for delivery. So just go up to your other dispatch that you were just at, uh, find out what truck it's on or just go to your house and wait for them. But this time it was about, 45 50 degrees out yesterday and just pouring rain and windy 
And I was like, oh man, and this is an extra day and a half of what they intended on the heat pack. And like, uh, so I was, I was a little worried. Well, then uh, I, I, I go back and I'm like, I don't want to talk to them. Like, I'll just wait for it to show up at the house because either they know where it is or they don't. So I've already spent whatever, two and a half, three hours on this uh, total. If you count the time waiting in between the two places. So then I get back to my house and, uh, I'm like, where is it? You know, it's six o'clock and I'm still not hearing anything. So I call the private number that I have gotten because I've had to call them so many times in the past of the little annex post office, uh, distribution place. And they're like, you know what? Our driver is brand new and they, claim they tried to deliver to you at midnight last night but the thing is like she wasn't allowed to be out past then um they they can't keep delivering that late like they have to come back at like 10 or whatever so what happened is that's the time that it got scanned off the truck or that actually more accurately when they looked into it everything in her truck got scanned as delivered so everyone got a delivery notice even though it was still sitting back at the warehouse in her truck, apparently in a state of disarray uh, in the sense of, uh, yeah, in the sense that now they didn't know where anything was and stuff got set down and out of the way. Mick, what's going on? Good to see you. Mock and Mick, good to see you. And Beauty and the Buds, also good to see you. Um, but so now it's... I don't know, eight, eight or nine at night. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to see them. Uh, it's too late. And it was stormy last night. And then out of nowhere, a mail truck comes over the street horizon. I'm out there, uh, just out by my truck, uh, out in front of the house anyways, uh, being a bad boy smoking. And I see him come up. And uh, it's this old Japanese guy who I know does the route usually. Uh, I've spoken with him. You know, he's a nice guy. Uh, and he must have been sent out to go, like, clean up her mess from her day. It was so bad the day before that she was out till 10 or midnight or whenever. So then I go running out to his truck, which I can't really run. So I'm more like hobbling. Uh, but run, run. Think of excitement. Um, <laughs> I can't it's more of limping quickly uh so I, I limp quickly to his truck he's just pulling out from our mailbox and there's nothing in it he hasn't delivered anything and i'm like oh you i mm, i know there's something in there i know that box has got to be in there so i jump into the back of the mail truck as he pulls up to the next stop of mailboxes because he has the back open um uh, because he'd been grabbing packages and like clearly like He's looking all over the truck, every house, trying to see what goes where. And uh, apparently he'd been working 14 hours because the way I uh, the way I figured this out was I jumped on the back of the truck and he's like, it's a federal blah, blah, blah. Like, get off the truck. And I'm like, like looking, just looking for a box. And I'm like, ah, live fish, live fish. And he's like, what? Get off my truck. Get off my truck get off my truck. It's a federal blah, blah, blah. Like re he's like repeating some like stat, 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 statute about don't bug mail truck drivers basically. And I'm like, there's live fish. I need those fish. Don't go back to the annex. And I'm like trying to reach to this box. And then he like pulls forward a bit and he grabs the box and he looks at it. And I'm like, Alex Williamson, Alex, Williams, that's mine. Those are mine. And he, freaking throws them at me like I don't know if it was like here's your fish or it's like get out of my truck but he like tosses them and then I catch them like these are live animals you effing idiot like like and and I lost my cool and apparently a guy had like what 14 or 15 hours of trying to straighten out some mess of a day but anyways I get the box it's wet it's cold and I just like have it and I'm off the truck and I'm like, well, good thing I didn't get arrested. That was a bit that escalated quickly. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I was I was going to get my fish. I was like, I've been told that those fish aren't on that truck before and then get a notice that they tried to deliver. It, and then it's back at the annex. And I would have lost my mind because they killed like six hundred dollars worth of shrimp once years ago, back when 
neo neo caradinas were still way, way rare um the same male annex did that um and they're like yeah we put them outside because it said shrimp on the side and we figured it'd be stinky if they died so we put them outside and this was in like december this is why i'm glad vivi is shipping overnight even though usps can be quite cheap and i love to ship shrimp and snails and other things that way um you know, honestly, though, these live bears were hardy. And then I opened the box and the professionality in which Roxanne and Peplin Creek, uh, Foxy's Fishes and, and uh, Peplin, that they wrap these things. I mean, they put every single fish in like a seal a meal bag and then wrapped it in paper towel and then bubble wrap and then uh, a heat pad up above that and like even though the heat pad wasn't working anymore i think it was about 60 degrees in the box which is great for how cold it was outside um so i got the fish and they each had a little uh cube to stop um ammonia or um any phosphates or anything building up or acidity uh swings and uh yeah so i saw them at first and they were kind of clear and translucent and they're young and so i was like oh there's no way these are and like i i kind of flicked the bag not hard i wasn't like wake up uh but yeah so i uh i flicked the bag and they woke up and they're fine so uh every single one of them plus the extra two they gave me seem fine so they're in a tank right now um uh yeah <laughs> rob's fish call the cops they'll never get here in time now hand over the fish yes exactly the cops don't do anything in seattle um if i haven't told you you know i had a crazy night last night i guess come come to think of it because after all that i was up late and i was looking at like oh what should i upload should i upload another video from florida do i want to make a new video i've got this list of stuff i want to make videos on and um i was like you know what i'm going to uh i'm gonna look up uh uh, my trip to Grant's house and I'm going to share a little video of those blue turtles that he keeps that I thought were just gorgeous little like turquoisey blue turtles that it's the it's the animal they dev designed the Pokemon Squirtle after now I was a little bit too old for Pokemon but I knew of it I just didn't ever get into it into it personally but um so I know I know what they're talking about but apparently Squirtle is the one that's designed after these turtles and you can see the thumbnail on my channel they're they're like these like soft blue turtles that are native to florida that are beautiful that um grant got before it was illegal to collect and then um yeah so um i look great today thank you thanks Curandulian. I, I appreciate it you know a lot of it just has to do with what I had to do in the day. If I had to run all over the place and I've been up all night and I'm in pain and yada, yada, I, I get real worn down. Today, I haven't had to do a damn thing. I've just been reading uh, that uh, LaCourt book on um, the life of, a, of an Aquarist, the, the biography, uh, and... Um, doing research on other stuff related to fish basically <laughs> being a bum uh i was gonna go to the fish store but it got too late in the stream it was streaming time so i do want to show you guys a couple things and then i gotta roll it up for the night but if anybody has any dying uh, urges uh to ask questions let me know as well um all right we got to mute everything again Hello, hello. 
Can you hear me? Are we good to go? Oh, man, it is nasty out. I don't know if you guys can see it coming down, but it is just nasty. It's gray and icky. Anyways, so. Look who keeps having babies. And. I have a little, well, hold on. Let me just turn this around so I can show you this. Let me see if we can get this turned to. All right, so my uh, Tiger's Blood Pearl Scale, I got my CO2 rolling in here again. We got my Tiger's Blood. Uh, angels have eggs. They fertilize them. But look who else I have. Look who showed up. An Amazon pea puffer. Well, not pea puffer, actually. Um, it's, an, it's an Amazon green puffer. Um... I don't think it's going to work in this tank, but everything is from the Amazon and there is so much room back here. <laughs> and we've got a lot of these um, pencil fish and uh, a lot of immersed growth. There's a ton of snails. So I just started them off in there to see what would happen. Um, I went to my local fish store and they were like, hey, bud, somebody brought in this guy and we need to give him a home. Can you give him a home? And I said, I can try. So I'm, he's on a trial basis. It's probably the worst time for the fact that they have babies right now. And this all needs to be trimmed again tonight. This grows out every week. It's growing so fast with the CO2. So I'm going to need to start selling on Vivi.com. I'm going to start selling plants, I think, because some of these plants are just gorgeous um, right now. We've just got such a variety, and they, the colors don't get justice done to them uh, during a live stream. But, uh, yeah, so I've got immersed, submerged. And then we've got the feathery tank over here with all my little blues. And uh, they're doing their thing, cleaning all my feathery plants for me. My poof ball plants, as I like to call them. And uh, we've got another CO2 manifold right here. So I can actually start running that when we're done with the stream. I'm going to start running that. So that'll be the first time that I'm running three CO2 tanks again in years. So then in here, this tank, which you all know crashed. This is how it's looking. I haven't cleaned the algae off the front or the wood, the hardscape at all. But I hope you guys can see that it's turned much greener and the little sticks of plants that were left are budding again. And that's all thanks to CO2 and overfeeding the fish food. Also, I've been um, hand eliminating the mulmy algae. And then I treated it with erythromycin, uh, a half of one packet, even though this is over 22 gallons. So I did half of one packet. And look at the carpet, though. The carpet has grown back very quickly. It'll fill out denser later. But that needs to all be chopped down again and uh, cleaned up. And then um, back there, I replanted a few plants. They're definitely catching a lot of algae. Like, look at this snail. He's got algae all over him. But uh, it's coming back to life. I need to take these out and hand scrub them, hydrogen peroxide scrub them. The main thing I don't want to lose plant-wise are the crypts, the crypt uh, civa, I never can say it, and the civa dosmani or whatever it's called, and then the uh, crypt spiralis red tiger. Um, and then beyond that, the other new news is over here in the shrimp tank, 
I ended up putting in so hey Curtis, thank you so very much for the ten dollars. Man, you must be balling. Everybody else is just like barely getting by. That is so kind of you. I know I know everybody is barely getting by lately with all the gas prices and food prices. It means a, a great deal to me. Thank you very much, Curtis. Uh I really appreciate it. Was there no question either? Just gonna throw me money, man. <laughs> thank you very kindly. So this is no tech, by the way. This is that shrimp tank I set up for aquatic arts uh, shrimp. And basically, we everything in here other than the Anubius and the, this Kabamba Furcata came in their kit and stuff that came with the shrimp. And so I wasn't getting pregnant shrimp like I wanted. I wanted pregnant shrimp. <laughs> I wanted them to be buried. And I wasn't seeing that. And so I was like, what is? Where are all the buried shrimp? Where are all the buried shrimp at? And uh, so all I did was I got some fresh coral and I put one teaspoon in. Because this is a two and a half gallon tank. And uh, I put one teaspoon in. It's actually about two gallons right now with all the hardscape and then the water down a bit. And then I put these guys in because there were hydra and planaria starting probably came, coming off the plants so i put some little exclamation point rasboras in there because there's no filtration there's no mechanical filtration there's only this well seeded uh lotus pod from another tank um i i wanted to kick start the cycle with something that was covered in like biological um debris and so they are now uh, I have now three of the yellow shrimp that are uh, they're they're uh, buried up, and here's one right here. They're actually such a dark orange. These um, aquatic arts ones. Oh, there's two that are buried up right here, fighting each other. I mean, like smashing into each other. But yeah, there's one right there. Their eggs are so darkly orange oh and there's the other one too so there's the other buried one so we got three buried uh four now four today here's another buried one right here so we got four buried uh females out of this breeder pack group that i bought and no high-tech anything we've just got basically a shop light on here an led shop light that was 20 bucks and no filtration no heater the, the light heats it itself plus this room's tent um, and then up here, we've got the new, let me grab my little pokey stick. We've got the new from Peplin and, uh, Roxanne, the new, uh, little, little buddies. And this is another little filterless, low tech, very old tank now. Uh, but it did have um, least killifish in it, and I just moved them into another tank and put these guys in it. Now, depending on how big these guys grow, they're getting a new tank quickly, but I just wanted to put them somewhere where they could acclimate. That's a pretty hard tank, but also that's a really chill tank. So they're up here where it stays warm, and, uh, and yeah, they're really cool. These are humpback lamia, L-I-M-I-A. And uh, they're cute. They're striped. They're just super cool. And then I've got my guppies in here. And I was testing last night because there was no way I believed. And these tests turn pink after, over time. Well, actually, all the colors turn different. But I just, in my head, I was like, there's no way without a filter that this tank, with all those snails and all that stuff, all that mulm, that it's going to be balanced and these guys are going to be fine. Like, that filter's not plugged in. It's just floating so that there's surface area sure enough there's no nitrites or nitrates in this guppy tank that's been set up never been cycled per se um i just started it slowly started with one pregnant female she had her babies and so it went so yeah right now none of my tanks have any nitrates or nitrites and in fact i'm realizing that i have quite the um quite the lack thereof and also i need to get this little betta rubra baby that grew up i need to get her uh him a female um uh, 
other than that, what else is going on? Oh, I moved these guys again in with the shrimps, in with the um, Caradina shrimp, uh, just because I'm hoping they'll spawn. We got the long, thin guy in there. I moved some blue dreams into the other nano fish tank. And then down here, I've been cleaning these guys up quite a bit. So it doesn't look pretty now, but it's actually prettier than it was because it, it had cyano all under here from the heat. And um, so it basically took out all the stem plants because it's just sand. See that mulm under there? That's natural. That's like poop and stuff and nutrients that plants can use now, but it didn't start that way. Um, and so now basically the sand cap has locked all that in and it's useful. Paul McCarthy, what's up? <coughs> um, Luke Wang, what's up? Uh, so... Yeah, now this has got, those little guys are getting old. I mean, they're like two and a half, three inches. Let's see if we can scare some forward. These are the uh, haplochromis. And then I've also got the blue lip buffalo cichlid that are over here. And I've got a colony of cribs and then uh, a group of bettas that are just hanging out, hiding in the grass. And Oh, and then the petricolas. And then also, I've got a whole bunch of banjo catfish in here somewhere. And I never see them in the day. I see them after like 2 a.m. But they'll, they'll magically pop out when I'm just doing this. And I'll see a tail or a flick. I'm not going to bother them. But there's a few banjo cats in there too. If you give them sand, they're extremely boring. And then these guys... Um, that tank's all clean and happy, so I don't mind putting my scissors, my skizzer machines in here. But, you know, I don't know. Literally, they're just MIA. I started with five of these guys, and there's four still of the adults. Um, and there's some babies. But I have no idea where the body of the one that died is. Like, what gives? Where is it? It never made an appearance. So, that's odd. Um, very odd. So then I looked all over around the bottom of the tank. But also, look at all these red cherry shrimp that are just living in the algae mess of this tank. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and some of the babies are getting pretty big. The ones that were born right when they got here are getting pretty big. Um, so that's a good, I mean, that's good. Um, but yeah, really hard water, lots of scuds in there. Um, uh, oh, these, these are, um, uh, Somthong Rasboras. These are, uh, Trigona stigma somfongzai. And they one of them that's right on the he's on the left now. Now he's center bottom. He has long fins. And then in here, these are both uh, a mixture of tangerine tiger and stardust babies, I believe, is what these are now. But yes, that's a long thin somfong rasbora, which I have never seen anywhere. I've never seen any long fin, any micro rasboras. So I'm really impressed by it. And I put the three females in with him. And I'm hoping that they're going to spawn in here because actually they all look like they've gotten rid of their bellies by now. So I probably should pull them out. There's still some somfongs over here too, but I probably should pull them out and, uh, and put them back into their, their jar. Um, one interesting thing, though, is that it got too cold over by the window here since I took out the heaters in my tank. And some of the fish in here, my gold tetras, they got ick. And the somfong rasboras didn't get it whatsoever. The chili rasboras just got hammered. And one of them still really has it. And I feel super bad for it. But the temperature's been hot for days. And poor thing still has ick all over. 
But their gills are so small that it, you don't really see it build up in their gills. So you actually see it on their body, which usually you miss the stage when it's building up on their body. But in any case, this tank just got too cold. So I had to put another one of those heaters in here. And, um, you know, that's the thing is when you travel, when you're moving things around, when you're playing musical fish with all your tanks, um, stuff's bound to happen. And uh, I'm also trying to get my my betas to breed, um, get them doing their thing. And uh, Rasbo, he has his partners. Uh, this tank's just doing its thing, too. This tank's running the best of all my tanks right now, probably, in the room. And we've got all the little baby Grammys that I brought, the Valenti Grammys that are in here. I was a little scared to put them with the... the uh, with the with these guys with the um beta but you know actually they hold their own just fine they're pretty cranky too so yeah that's what's going down um oh yeah now these guys are all kind of getting together the little mias so that's what's up guys um i have probably streamed long enough in that it is my buddy's birthday and he requested that I come down and join him. He's about 65 and uh, he has been going to the same bar every Friday for, I want to say 40 years, like since before the grunge era, he's like an old punk rocker guy. And, uh, I'm supposed to go buy him a beer, even though I don't drink or anything, but I'm going to go down there. So I got to get out of here. Um, and am I planning to go to the NJAS meeting this month? Uh, no. Uh, I no. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to anything. Um, although I was thinking about going to the Ohio fish uh the, the cichlid but um probably not because I'll, I'll be there when it's my wife's father's birthday and i feel guilty uh if i just disappear from the family and uh <laughs> start doing that so yeah i've got i've got a few issues hopefully i can get everything back to good here in the fish room and fish house um, before I have to leave again. And then hopefully I can get a bunch new tanks outside and inside set up for the natives. So if you are going to be in um, uh, Florida, December 4th through the 13th, drop me a comment, drop me a message, message me, email me, whatever. And if you want me to cover something in particular while I'm down there that you think's cool, let me know. I'll try to cover it. Um, yeah, this channel is all about sharing. And if I'm the one going, I should be the one fetching and getting the footage. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Super Chatters, New Local Austin, what's up? Good to see you. Sorry, I'm headed out. And uh, new, both of you new members, thank you very much for either renewal or... Um, becoming members it means a lot helps a lot this is me signing out i'll see you guys later take care of your critters take care of yourself or you can't take care of your critters and i will talk to you later much love everybody bye